Um, I hope you had a good morning so far. I've enjoyed your presentations. Um, as it says up there, my name is Neil Dawson. I uh, head up the paid search, um, or paid media, should I say, uh, department of IEMA. Um, and um, today, we're going to be talking through um, AdWords scripts. Let's get this working. Oh, there you go. First thing, just a little bit about me. I've been in search since 2002. Um, seen a lot of things come and go in that time. Mostly the rise of competition and the rise of technology, which is always a positive thing. Um, I'm a wary Norwich City fan, so anyone who follows Premiership football would probably understand my anguish there. Uh, and I'm also very much a novice algorithmic trader. Um, and I think it's my interest in numbers and in developing automated solutions that has uh, led me down that path. Um, I'm five years into doing that, and I'm still uh, not giving up the day job, so hence the reason why I put novice. Bear with me, just gauging the remote control. Um, so for today's agenda, what are we going to be going through? So um, what are AdWords scripts? Um, so we'll go from the fundamentals of what they actually are from the building blocks up to how you can use them. What can they do? So what they can they do um, in application? Um, advanced scripting ideas, so what they can do for your business and scripts in action. So just a couple of our um, case studies on how we've used scripts um, within our teams to help um, improve workflow with our clients. And what next is just something that I'd like to see um, happen within the scripts marketplace. So first off, a quick show of hands. Anyone here, just quickly show your hand if you are aware of AdWords scripts or use AdWords scripts. Oh, there you go, that's more than I expected, which is positive. And for the rest of you who don't, then hopefully this will be an educational experience. If you're still none the wiser after this presentation, then please let me know and I'll have to revise my format. So, look, what are AdWords scripts? Um, basically, in the nutshell of it, programmatic search is now here. Um, yes, we do already have third-party bid tools available on the market, supplied by the biggest names out there with millions of dollars of investment, so the likes of DS3, Adobe, Kenshu, and Marin. But Google have lowered that barrier to entry by allowing scripting within their own interface, um, where we can now be in control of our own code and our own actions within AdWords. Um, they're not new, they've been around for um, a good couple of years, but we're only now seeing the fruition of momentum of people using them and they're coming to critical mass, especially amongst, obviously, paid search marketeers. Um, as paid search becomes more complex, um, the idea of using scripting to automate and to, to make um, paid search programmatic is becoming more important um, because competition is rife, saturation in the paid search market. Anyone here who has to manage a paid search budget will know that's very difficult. And the good thing about scripts is anyone here, any of you guys in the room, even if you've never done one before, could theoretically create one. As long as you've got the ability to think of an idea, explain it out loud to someone, that can be developed into a script. Uh, and interestingly, I was speaking, well, I was in Google last year, and they were talking about their DS3 platform. And um, anecdotally, they were talking about they wanted to move more towards a real-time bidding kind of um, setup. Now, I don't know how feasible that is or whether that was just off-the-cuff remarks, but with AdWords scripts, we're actually almost there in real-time bidding in paid search, which is really, if you think about where we were five years ago or even where we were 10 years ago, that's huge leaps in, uh, in opportunity for people who are using that medium. Okay, so um, this is the basic interface. If you're not aware of AdWords, this is what you see uh, when you log into to the left-hand menu. Um, what we can see in there is there's just, I've boarded where the scripts are. It's very informal, not very sort of in your face kind of, this is scripts, come use us. Um, but the way it works is you just simple, you enter simple or complex JavaScript, and that just depends on how much um, code you need to use and how complex you want to be. We have code that is short as 13 lines of code that executes, and code that runs at over 350 lines of code. Um, it runs in the Google's Apps Script Engine, um, so it's a full Google infrastructure, um, and the beautiful thing about that is it's free. Obviously, you have media costs tied to it, but um, the fact that Google hosts and manages that infrastructure makes it very um, accessible. And it can be used across the whole gambit um, for paid search, so everything from reporting to optimization, and it has full access to the API. So don't be fooled thinking you can only do basic tasks in it. You can pretty much do whatever you could do via the API. Rob, where is the, where, where am I zapping it that way? So I'm pressing buttons and nothing's happening. Um, right, so um, I think the fundamental thing here is you don't have to be a software developer to run AdWords scripts. 
Um, historically, using API, if anyone's developed or tried to develop any kind of automated solution within their business, um, you have to either, especially if you're corporate side, you have to go to an IT department, you have to come, maybe come up with a business case analysis, they have to push it through, they have to create APIs, testing processes. That all takes time and it all costs money. And for something that might just be an idea or a theory or a strategy that you wanted to test that to you is quite low key but could develop into something more flourishing, it's probably not really worth the whole project cycle time. But with um, AdWords scripts, you can do rapid prototyping. Scripts can be developed in under 10 minutes and live within the next minute. You could be gathering data within 11 minutes of starting creating that script. Um, and that gives you great iteration processes so you can develop strategy, execute, learn, repeat. And it's that process of continuous improvement is what's going to give you the benefit of using them. So this is what it looks like within, still within AdWords, as you can see the top left. We've just entered the scripts function, and this is just basic, a basic JavaScript for one of our scripts that we use. Um, they are very plain in the interface. It's a copy and paste job, so I hope everyone in this room can manage copy and paste. Um, and if you can do that, then basically you can already run AdWords scripts. There's loads of free resources on the web. Um, free AdWords scripts is a really good resource. It's, it's quite old now, not been updated in a while, but if you're looking for entry level, um, then that is certainly a good place to start. If you're looking for something a little bit more robust and scalable, then obviously we're always here to talk to, and I could probably bore you to sleep with about scripts, so I'd be happy to talk to anyone about that. Good. Okay, so how they operate. So we know the interface, we know how we can um, upload them into Google, but how do they operate? So within, for the non-paid search people, AdWords, you basically run accounts. Within your accounts, you have your campaigns, your ad groups, your keywords, and your associated ads. And that's all done at account level. So you can run scripts at account level. That's great. You can focus on issues that you might have within the account, optimization techniques that you want to sort of bring to life from within the account. Um, and that can let you focus on key tasks like improving quality score or targeting optimization. Um, one of the key secrets, well not secrets, one of the key scalability um, wonders of um, scripts is that you can actually scale it to MCC level. And that's, that's basically my client center where you can house many accounts in there. So you can test in your accounts section and then scale it to your MCC. And what that gives you is huge scalability on what you can do with your operations. So you might test something at a local level and think, actually, this is really working. I'd like to be able to deploy this across all our accounts. So if you have multiple accounts or your, if your clients side have multiple accounts and have them structured in a certain way, or if you're an agency, therefore you can actually brand, you can harness the economies of scale and you can start using one singular script at the top of that tree. It can go down to these MCCs. It can go down to all these accounts that you might have sectioned off. So you can actually now start simple development of like, as I said, 30 lines of codes or smaller scripts, you can deploy across all these. And I go back to what I was saying, it's all hosted by Google. It's free to execute on Google. So I think it shows huge opportunities for people with the right imagination. <coughs> okay, so this is something I added in actually yesterday to this presentation, um, campaign experiments. So, Google have just, um, it's been in beta for a while now. Um, Google have just rolled it out. But um, so you should see people who've got access to AdWords accounts should see this. Um, and the really awesome thing about campaign experiments, it allows you to split test in sample data um, so you can make any changes. So all you basically do is you can take a campaign, you duplicate that campaign, it'll make one the control, one the experiment. And then you can make changes to the experiment. Do what you want with it. Increase bids, remove keywords, change targeting. And that will then, in, in, in samples, so it will split test it 50-50 with your control campaign. So any changes that you make um, can all of a sudden be verified against the actual account performance. Before that, if you were running tests, you'd have to test your change at campaign level and then measure that against what previous performance was. And that sort of out of sample data is always can lead to some iffy results, which doesn't give you full 100% confidence levels. Um, so what this now does is this gives us even more pay, um, accountability as paid search marketeers, which is great. We love that. Um, it also gives us the ability to test scripts against control. So if you come up with an idea of actually, do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to, um, I'd like to increase targeting in Manchester uh, over these period of dates because we're doing some um, you know, below the line activity. Sure, just run a campaign um, experiment, test that, see what the uplift was like, and you can see how that, how that tracked against the, um, the, the control campaign. So it gives you loads of ability to be really accountable in what you're doing um, and also just justify, the, justify the, the ideas that you're coming up with. 
Okay, so what can they actually do? Um, so I guess we've explained so far the implementation process. So now we're looking at what the, um, the entities that they support. So this is just a, a list um, of basically all the things that you can do via the API um, with scripts. So for example, um, shopping product campaigns, you can now split that out using scripts. You can, at a product level, come up with a full automated bidding solution based on what your sales to cost is or your profit margin is for each of those products. Um, for budgets, you can manage budgets to the penny uh, which is a lot more accurate than how um, AdWords adjusts budgets. You can share budgets across multiple campaigns. You can adjust daily spend levels depending on what flighting suits your business and what you're trying to achieve. Um, other examples would be labels. Um, you can measure spikes in traffic and then label the keywords or the campaigns which had those spikes, so then you can retrospectively analyze certain conditions that you're looking for within your campaigns. Um, targeting, as mentioned before, you can focus on certain areas or regions. Um, within the UK, obviously, worldwide, and uh, bid and bid modifiers, which are probably the areas that I find most interesting um, because that opens up a whole new doorway um, with how you can create your own customized bidding system. So three major categories of scripts. If we just think of these as basic, intermediary, and as I've named it there, advanced, it'll give you an idea of um, how we can go with these. So, First one is reporting and alerts. Um, majority of people who are doing large-scale paid search will either be using a third-party bid management tool, which will give you the API access to do reporting. Um, and you know, I'll be completely honest, when we, many moons ago, when we first started our data warehouse project, we were using scripts to extract information from Google and uh, inserting that directly into our, into our database. And that was great for us to design the infrastructure of our database and the schema. Um, whilst the data was being imported. And then once we were happy with that, we then obviously built up full APIs to search engines and more. So you know, they've been very useful for, for us as a business as well. Um, one of the reports that I think is really interesting, so when you're using the API, you're obviously restricted to what is ever programmed, whatever reports that you get from the API, so whether that be keyword level or clicks or impressions, stuff as basic as that. One of the reports that we like to use and, and we developed and simplified by using, the, um, by using scripts is a search engagement report. Once you've got, I want to say webmaster tools, but I think it's Google Search Console, I believe now, probably a bit behind the times on that. Uh, but once you've got that linked up to your AdWords account, um, you can start getting the console data within your AdWords. Um, and that's just done through one single API call, the paid organic query report. And from that, we can get that data delivered automatically to us, either via spreadsheet or via CSV, open it, load it into our template, and all of a sudden, we have a new range of data that people probably wouldn't even have been thinking before. So this is our search engagement. What it shows, is, apologies, it's a bit blurred. Um, but for example, the two pie charts at the top, the dark blue segment um, shows us organic engagement, the orange section shows us paid engagement, and the gray section shows us where we weren't engaged at all, as a, um, if the client wasn't engaged as an advertiser. And we split it out, so the top is generic, as you, as you can see, you could expect to see those kind of click-through rates, and the bottom is brand. And on the left-hand side, we're tracking those over a monthly period, so we can understand what kind of engagement is coming through both channels uh, on a monthly basis. We have our quadrant here, which gives us the strengths, weeks, and opportunities where we compare organic positions versus paid positions, and we can see the hot zones where we're very well represented for both, and zones on each side where we could push paid or push organic. And the red zones is where it, um, serious work needs to be done on both sections. So I think what I'm trying to demonstrate here is reporting doesn't have to be boring. It can be ad hoc reports that you actually find interesting, that you find hard to repeat over and over and over. They can actually be automated and delivered to your inbox. So all you have to do is open it and say, right, action needs to be done or action doesn't need to be done. Um, alerts. So Google will quite um, kindly send you email alerts. So we set this up over the holiday season, a KPI tracker um, for a lot of Seg with a lot of verticals, a lot of action happens over Christmas and New Year. Um, and we wanted to make sure that when we weren't in the office on times of uh, you know, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, that we were keeping an eye on performance and that uh, everyone within the team, that's the client and our own team, we're one team, um, can have a view of what, have full transparency of performance and we can make sure if anything that can be done, it can be action. So we created a KPI report that, tra that ran hourly. So I don't want to get too complex here. It ran hourly and it looked at... <coughs> 
from midnight to that day, to that point in time when it ran, what performance was, and it compared it to the comparable time frames of average of the last seven days, and we worked out what the deviation of that. I mean, the long story short of that is, is that if campaign was overperforming, great, sit back, enjoy your Christmas turkey. If it's underperforming, then what we can do is, someone needs to be looking at that, or we need to look at that whenever we can soon we can action it, and that's gonna be delivered to us. And that was just done with custom logic within the scripts and with 91 lines of code. So, you know, this is not, really complicated stuff that we're doing here. Actually, I just want to go back here. There's also, I don't know if anyone's aware of uh, Twilio, which is something that's it's not interested me, but I do think it just shows the capabilities. Twilio is a, um, is a sort of VOIP API where you can basically link their API to your alerts and you can get custom text messages sent to you, or you can even pro put in the script what you want it to say and it will call you up and let you know when an alert's been fired. So, you know, whatever your imagination is of what you want, might want that to be, or if you do want a call from them. But I think that just goes to show the integrations that is possible via this, um, via this channel. Okay, so automation of recurring tasks. Um, Anyone who's managed any kind of repetitive process will know that the repetitive task is one that sucks resource out of any team. Um, and when teams aren't working on forward thinking strategies, such as analysis or strategies on how to grow the business, and they're just doing repetitive tasks, and that's time, which is time wasted. And that's something that I loathe personally. Um, and so why, as a business, we're really interested in developing this to help streamline our processes. Um, you know, we like to think, code it once, and then you can repeat it forever, and that gives us um, lots more free time to work on actual important business. So, um, one, so I've got a, few, a couple of examples here of how we've used scripts to do that. Um, so, this, but this script here, I'll give you a summary. A client, um, a large book seller, um, global, we work with mainly with the States, um, they have huge um, coverage in the States. They have many sub-brands, and they have, they have massive problems getting IT to push through um, changes required. So they had no shopping campaign coverage um, across any of their products. Um, and you know, we, this, is, this is probably one of our oldest scripts, actually, going well over two years ago. And so you know, when we, they came to work with us, we were like, well, this is madness. You need to be in this channel because you're losing money. And they said, well, we can't build the API. So we thought, well, what we could do, you know, Aima are excellent at crawling the web, and it's something they've been doing for many, many years, so we could leverage the power of that crawler. Um, we could implement, you could input that data into a database, we could then pull that data out of the database, set up a, set up a feed, and upload that to the engine. That would cut down loads of time, because trying to do this manually was taking well over half a day to try and um, pull out the client's products and put them into a relative feed. So we thought, well, actually, how can we simplify that even further, where we can just set it up once and let it run without having to involve anyone else? So, we came up with, at the time, we thought it was a very ingenious idea. We um, created this script, 257 lines of code. Uh, what the script did, it went through the whole of the client's AdWords account. It extracted the landing page of every single um, keyword within that account. We then used um, regular expression um, variables to extract from the landing page of the client's website the key metrics that we needed to build the Google shopping feed. Um, and then once it did that, the script then auto-populated um, the Google Merchant Center, which is on the right-hand side, where the products are kept. So once we um, optimize that process, we can just get this script to run daily, and it will just crawl the feeds. If it's out of stock, it won't list it. If it's in stock, it lists it. Um, and we had one complete shopping feed. So that's something that was just fully automated. I mean, we now have moved to a more, because the product scale has grown, we've moved to more of an API solution. Um, but we used this for well over two years, and it grew their shopping campaigns from 0% of the share of revenue up to um, in the 50s and 60s percent. So it was a huge win for the client, doubled revenues in that area, and it was just done with um, 257 lines of code. So I think, you know, I think that shows how, how powerful it can be if it's used correctly. Um, another solution that we came up to to a client's problem um, is using the API. So on the right-hand side, yes, we did use the API, and I'll tell you why we did that. And on the left-hand side is what we did generated with scripts. Uh, one of our clients has mass promotions. And they have constant offers being run every week. Um, due to the labor-intensive way of uploading those, um, 
offers because you have to pause old offer, implement the new offer, then when that's done, you have to then pause that and then re-implement the old offer um, or the, should I say, the business as usual advert. Um, it was a lot of work logistically. It was very difficult. We're talking about a campaign that runs over six countries with six different languages and six different accounts. So it's very complex. So we thought, how could we streamline this process and uh, make it easier? Because, I mean, you know, it's my staff who had to do it and I could, I could see the pain on their faces when they had to go through it. So um, we had 235 lines, uh, lines of the script code. Um, what we did was, um, actually I'll do this in reverse order. First, our development team created this amazing web app, um, interfaces directly with the Google API, and it gives us access to all the um, creatives and campaigns and ad groups that we have in there. So that's great. The, one, the, the scheduling part is sorted. And the reason we need to do the API, these ads have to go on and off at specific times to the minute. They can't be on you know, for 10 minutes extra, 15 minutes extra. And this is where AdWords scripts at the moment only allows um, it runs, because it runs in the Google infrastructure, it runs, Google runs them roughly every hour. I mean, we have managed to, we've managed to sort of hack that system, get it down lower, but it still doesn't give us um, precision timing. Um, so we had to come up with an API solution, but it was still getting all those ads, so we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of ads every week into the API. So we just used a script, and what the script did, it scoured all the ads that were across all the, um, the campaigns that we needed. It worked out when they were, we worked out when they needed to be enabled and when they needed to be paused. So this report just then just gets delivered to the, um, to the analyst's inbox. They can just pull that report, input into the API, and what was a four hour, again, four hour, over a half a day task is now done in less than 20 minutes. So that's been a huge time saver, and that means we can get 100% of promotions out um, every week, whereas before, um, before coming on um, with AIMA, the client was struggling to get half that amount out, and plus they were using bid technology that you, everyone in here would have heard of as well. So that was really interesting how these kind of custom solutions, thinking of, trying to think a little bit out of the box, can really help customers, customers leverage um, their offers. Um, so advanced optimization. So um, this is where I think the future of scripts is, um, and this is where we're going to be, we're experimenting, and we're look, working a lot with clients on how we can develop further. Um, APIs, machine learning, third-party data stores, all have the ability to integrate with scripts. Um, so, I mean, that's, when you think about that, that can be extremely powerful, and I think in a saturated marketplace, when you're trying to find new ways of gaining an edge, how smart you are with how you utilize your own data and how you implement that into your campaigns will be the difference between you beating your competitor or not. What this shows us here is we've got scripts in the center, but this is all what an example of what can talk into the script. So we've got APIs. You can have TV, sports schedules. They can be API'd straight into a script. Um, weather data. I've got a small example on that. That can be API'd into a script. Um, pricing and inventory data. So any of your back-end data, that can make it in there as well. Um, data warehouses. Scripts can talk to databases. It can write data and it can read data. So it's a two-way function, which is quite powerful. And Google Drive, um, which is a storage, is a spreadsheet system, and is remarkably useful for prototyping and getting scripts off the ground. So I think, you know, with all the access that you can have to Google AdWords scripts, it really is your imagination that's going to hold you back. So, so regarding API integration, this is a script I just knocked up um, a few days ago. Uh, it took less than 10 minutes. Um, and basically, all I wanted to demonstrate in here, so on the right-hand side, you can see we've got um, the AIMA ad, and it's got a live count of Twitter followers. Um, and what that's doing is basically using a twitterCount.com API, which we've got reference on line 30 of the code, and it's pulling in a live count of um, Twitter um, followers, and then we've just got a simple parameter function which then adds on plus one to try and entice people to sign up. And I know I don't have to ask anyone in here to sign up because obviously everyone's following Aima in here, right? Yeah, good. Um, but I think what we're trying to demonstrate here is the simplicity of the code. 33 lines of code gives us a dynamic ad um, that we can serve to anyone. And I mean, you know, you need to think of it in the process of, right, this is a very simple. Um, execution, but if you're using stock levels on a product, if you're using currency rates, um, if you're using flight costs or flash sales, um, you can incorporate all that data very simply into your ads and it gives you, it'll give you a bit of a standout and a bit of a, a better exposure than other people who would be um, advertising next to you. And you know, it's, as I say, it's all about marginal gain. So these kind of creative tweaks is really going to help you um, get the edge. 
Um, yeah, so Google Prediction API, I don't know if anyone's played with that here, um, but it's basically Google's machine learning algorithm in the cloud. Amazon have something similar. Um, Microsoft have, I was discussing this yesterday with a colleague, a slightly better product in Azure. Um, I guess that's down to personal preference. Um, but I think what this gives us, and I included this, because um, what this gives us is a really good insight into where we are right now. Um, you need to think that if I'd have said to you like four years ago, oh yeah, you know, we can use um, APIs, we can bring in um, machine learning algorithms, and we can run that against data sets within search, you'd be like, whoa, we need a software developer, we need someone with a PhD. And that's just not the case. Uh, we can now do that straight off the bat. So anyone who can write JavaScript to start training data. Um, the table on the right-hand side, um, that's just an example looking at weather data. So we've got the columns looking at average CPC, temperature, wind, an hour of day, and we could add in day of the month as well. And we could train the Google prediction algorithm to turn around and say, well, actually, what's the best return for us when it's, you know, what's going to be the best return? They could kind of could spit out when it's sunny at this temperature. Um, then we know you're going to be getting a better return. I mean, obviously, that all depends on your business model. Um, and I've just used this as an example. So, I mean, if anyone's selling ice creams, I'm sure that would be particularly useful. Um, but, you know, I think it gives you just some scope about actually what direction we're actually heading in with this. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to race through some case studies here. Um, so this is a particular case study for a client who were looking to focus on non-commercial terms. Um, they're trying to think a little bit out of the box of how they can attract people um, in a market where they're not necessarily looking for the product or service. Um, Tried it before, but um, it has to be very responsive. Um, for non-commercial terms, Google's not a big fan of showing commercial ads. Um, so we have to be very responsive and figure ways of making sure we could appear in a strong position during the burst of activities, because there's only a short window that we can appear um, for these terms, and making sure that we're appearing top of the page, not bottom of the page, and we're not getting rotated, which means Google only shows you, say, one out of five impressions. Google only shows you once, so I don't think your ads are relevant. So what we did is we, um, we developed a uh, script that bids every half an hour. And it's that response level that kept pushing the bid, kept refreshing it, which meant we could track the position of where we were and uh, how we appeared. Um, we applied logic on that to make sure that bids would never exceeded a certain amount of money whilst we were updating them, um, so we didn't blow any budgets. Um, because of non-commercial terms, CPCs can fluctuate wildly, depending on Google's algorithm. Um, we also inter uh, integrated some other logic, which gave us first page bidding, which um, is another way of basically explaining Google have a threshold before they show your ad on, a, um, on their page. It used to be you know, the lowest entry would pay 0.01 pence, but they scrapped that model, and they now do it sort of a, you have to pay a minimum of what they think that first page bid is worth. And so we had to add some logic in there as well. And just for a bit of fun, we added in countdown timers, and I don't know if you can see that. Um, I don't know if it's apps. But, you know, it says kick off, it says kick off in 14 minutes, and that was counting down. So if you'd searched a minute later, that would say kick off in 13 minutes, a minute later, kick off in 12 minutes. So we added some dynamic ability into the ad as well to make it more relevant and fitting with the short burst of activity that was happening. And, you know, this particular segment of activity saw a 310% increase in sales. So I think that was a real positive movement of how we formulated a script to deliver a specific strategy as opposed to just having one strategy that sat across all of that business. Um, another example in where we use campaign experiments is um, a client has um, a clear view of what their lifetime value is over the course of a week. Um, very seasonal product. Um, but what they can work out is basically, well, we know, for example, on a Saturday at this time, the lifetime value of the new business that comes through there is lower than, say, on a Monday at the same time. So whereas they might be getting people come through the website who might be repeat users or new business um, or new users who are not, have, have not got a suitable lifetime value, they were able to use their data to pinpoint that. So once they had that timetable, it was like, well, this is simple. What we can do is we can just create this into a managed bid schedule that just runs seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and we'll just adjust the bids. And so it was simple enough to do um, separate mobile and desktop strategies um, because they do interact very differently. And um, we split test it via campaign drafts just to see how, popular, how, see how, how it performs. And it's quite clear to see with the, with the Greens that it had a tremendous effect on, um, on, on the performance of the campaign. And, you know, this was... This script is four times more responsive than your, your, your main bid tool. So I think it's the real-time bidding element that gives the edge to users who really understand their business data and, and can really maximize the potential of that. 
Um, I think we're almost at the end. Yeah, so what next? Um, and this is uh, an area we're exploring. Um, well, I say more than exploring, it's probably in beta for us right now, um, is using machine learning um, with AdWords scripts, with our own data warehouse, to, to close the loop, to give us continual um, proactive, I put proactive management up there. So um, R, I don't know if anyone's aware of it here, R is a statistical programming language. Um, we can test models in R, there's machine learning regarding decision trees, all sorts, Bayesian models. And so we find the best fit model. So for this example here, the data we're seeing there is for a, um, our, one of our book clients. Um, we can see the ISBN of the book. Um, we estimated an upper and lower boundary of conversion using this Bayesian model, and then with 80% confidence levels, we can start to predict ahead of time what products we think are gonna drop in. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't interested in my team telling me, oh, you know, yesterday we had a good sales on this product. I'm interested in, well, next week we're estimating to have good sales on this product, and this is how we're gonna capitalize on it. So, using the, um, machine, le using the machine learning with the, with the model, we are able to build out products which can automatically feed into AdWords scripts, or AdWords scripts, via the shopping campaign attribute, we'll be able to push those products ahead of time. So it can tell us, well, we know these products are going to sell, so we should be on the front foot pushing these products, not waiting for these products to sell so we increase bids. Um, and that can then all tie back into us processing the data in our data warehouse, which is uh, Postgres SQL. So I think what that gives us is it gives us great ability to start forecasting and predicting performance, whereas currently a lot of analysis is done on just optimizing what has happened. Um, and you know, anyone who does any gambling will know past performance is not a key of future success. So, um, just to summarize, um, scripts, um, they provide a low cost entry into um, programmatic search. So I think it's definitely worthwhile speaking to people in your business to make sure that um, you're testing strategies on that. And uh, even if it's just small strategies, I'd, I'd really um, employ you to get started. Uh, hugely customizable and scalable. Everyone's business set is different. You might be selling the same products, but I guarantee your on-site on conversion will be different to your competitors. Your CRM will be different to your competitors. Your retention and your churn will be different to your competitors. So it's those metrics which should really influence how you're bidding. Um, Rapid prototyping allows for quick answers and um, to business questions, um, which is really important. Third-party data integration, which we discussed regarding APIs and, th um, and the third-party data stores are really good. And it ends the, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could, wouldn't it be great if we could automate this process? Wouldn't it be great if we'd increase bids on a weekend, but only in this area? Uh, uh, you can do that now. It's very simple to do. And um, it can be done just a few lines of code. Oh. So, oh, hello. <laughs> I'll take that though. Um, as I say, you know, if you're not programmatically working with AdWords, you really are being left behind. So it's really something that you should be looking into. So thank you very much.